Dr. Rico here. This is a lecture from my mini course, Robotic Planning and Kinematics. The syllabus and notes are in the description. All right, section 3.2, the configuration space, part of the configuration spaces chapter. In the rest of this chapter, we study how to represent the position of robots composed of rigid bodies, assuming no obstacles are present. We postpone the study of obstacles to the next chapter, chapter four. We start with a simple observation. To specify the position of every point belonging to a rigid body, it is equivalent to provide, one, the position of a specific point and the orientation of the rigid body, plus a representation of the shape of the rigid body, which does not vary with time as the body is rigid. Or, even more simply, two, a minimal set of variables that describe the position and orientation of the specific point. This observation motivates the following definitions. One, a configuration of a robot is a minimal set of variables that specifies the position and orientation of each rigid body composing the robot. The robot configuration is usually denoted by the letter Q. Two, the configuration space is the set of all possible configurations of a robot. The robot configuration space is usually denoted by the letter Q, so that Q is an element of Q. Little Q is an element of big Q. A specific configuration, little Q, is an element of the configuration space, big Q. The number of degrees of freedom of a robot is the dimension of the configuration space, i.e. the minimum number of variables required to fully specify the position and orientation of each rigid body belonging to the robot. Four, given that the robot is at configuration Q, we know where all points of the robot are. In other words, there is a function B of Q, as shown in figure 3.4 below, that specifies the position of each point belonging to the robot at configuration Q. The function B is called the configuration map, and it maps each point Q in the configuration space, big Q, to the set of all points B of Q of the workspace belonging to the robot. Note, one way to represent the position of every point of the robot at a configuration Q is to specify the position orientation and shape of each rigid body belonging to the robot. Okay, so we have a configuration space, big Q. We have a specific configuration, little q, in there. The configuration map is what maps that little q from big Q to the workspace, okay? Note, the configuration space should not be confused with the workspace. Common misconception. As shown in figure 3.4, we'll look at it again, the workspace is always the two-dimensional Euclidean space R2 or the three-dimensional space R3 where the robot moves. The configuration space, instead, is a space of variables that describe the position and orientation of each rigid body component of a robot. It's an abstract space. It's a mathematical space. To make these notions more concrete, let us now examine the configuration spaces of the robot examples introduced above. For example, we will learn that a robot composed by a single rigid body moving in the plane has three degrees of freedom, two translational and one rotational. And a robot composed of multiple rigid bodies moving in the plane has three degrees of freedom for each rigid body minus the number of constraints imposed by the joints. Several different types of joints are used to interconnect rigid bodies. Several different types of interconnection are shown in figure 3.5 below. The most common joint types are prismatic, which allows one rigid body to translate relative to another. For example, a telescoping pole that can extend and retract so we have here a prismatic joint shown in the figure where we have translation allowed between two rigid bodies. 
and Revolut, which allows one rigid body to rotate about a single axis relative to another. For example, the elbow joint of a human arm. So if we look here, this is a diagram that shows a Revolut joint. In the manipulator shown in figure 3.2, so back up here, this manipulator, okay, the first three joints are each revolute, one connecting the base to the body of the robot, one connecting the body to the lower arm, and one connecting the lower arm to the upper arm. This is commonly referred to as the RRR configuration. Each revolute joint is denoted by an R. Okay. In the figure, there are also some illustrations of three degrees of freedom in a planar problem. Spherical three degrees of freedom. This would be like a ball and socket joint, right? Uh, we have cylindrical two degrees of freedom where you can have rotation and translation. Just a revolute one degree of freedom joint like we talked about before. Probably the most common type of joint in robotics. The second most common being prismatic one degree of freedom in translation. And then one helical degree of freedom is, is illustrated here. So now we've defined the configuration space, how it relates to the workspace, how you can have a configuration map to the workspace from the configuration space, and how these different joints affect the degrees of freedom in a robot configuration space. All right, I'll see you next time.